Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. Our next guest is on a mission to build a culture of mental health for boys and men of color. He has created a groundbreaking program that helps equip marginalized men with mental health coping skills. Please welcome mental health advocate and the founder of the Confess Project, Lorenzo Owens. Yes. yes. Right now, I, I have to know with the uh, Confess Project, when did you found it and what was the inspiration behind it? So the Confess Project was founded in May of 2016. Um, it was founded on my personal experiences of going through, you know, major depression, childhood trauma. Um, I was incarcerated as a juvenile. Um, and roughly after my release as being incarcerated, I started working in the juvenile. Um, and then the nine years later, I also worked in the mental and behavioral health sector uh, with children and families that suffer from different mental illnesses. Mental illnesses. So that was my inspiration, my personal and professional experience. We're able to marry each other and truly create something I think that can help so many many men and their families as well. In how many cities are you in? Uh, 12 cities now across um, southern and midwest regions. Awesome. Yes. Yes. I think it's very needed. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, you not only have personal experience, but you have data mm -hmm. from the University of Arkansas Medical Sciences College of Public Health yes. that shows why there is a huge need for this. Tell us about this data and how it correlates with your project. Yes, yeah, so we realized that 58% uh, of the men that we've surveyed in, in our program um, said that they would rather receive um, you know, therapy if it was in a barbershop. Mm, um, wow. We, we realized that that in itself says a lot that uh, with such a lack of clinicians, which is 4% of clinicians in the field that are of color, 2% um, of those that are African American males, we realized that barbers can truly stand in the gaps, wow. truly make a difference it's in so our dope. communities. Yeah. Yeah. How, how many barbers do you have? Um, 62 barbers 62 right now. Now, and, yes. and, and what are some of the qualifications that would allow them to, you know, it, take it, uh, partake in a project uh, as such? So they must be a licensed barber. Obviously, must be a, a you know a, a resident there in that state in the United States. And mm -hmm. beyond that, they just must must show interest and have um, just the the, um, the motivation to continue in the program mm -hmm. to also go through regular webinars and follow ups. So there so are, there is additional training. Yes, yes. So they also go through educational webinars. We have someone who follow up with them and just continue to make sure that they're able to continue what what we've trained them on That's and to continue. Those so they're clients. not yeah. diagnosing; they are canceling. Yeah. And being Yes. Ear. Yeah, so they're awesome. they're a mental health advocate. I always like to say that they're not experts. Okay. They're folks yeah. who are um, that's being able to understand their clients, be able to act, be part of active listening, um, to be able to be able to work around stigma reduction, yes. not being non-judgmental. These are some of the factors that with men, um, we realize that if they're able to put this in place, we're able to have more men to open up. Yes. Men can be seen and heard, so and they dope. can obviously be more successful in their life. I love mm -hmm. it. I love it. Um, you know, we tell our our, our stylists. We tell our right. barbers mm -hmm. pretty much everything. Yes. I know Paula, my stylist, she knows a lot about me. But when we talk about men who sometimes, and, and I don't want to make a broad statement, can be closed when it comes mm. to yes. expressing themselves, how do the barbers specifically get into the conversation? Like, hey man, how you doing? Like, how you really <laughs> doing? What, what is it like, that, that conversation yeah. starter? So that conversation starter can be um, just perfect example. Maybe a gentleman is having a bad day um, and this person is saying that, you know, hey, um, I'm having a bad day or maybe they've had some issues at home with their wife or with their children. This barber is able to engage in a way where he's also over, able to, to listen to this person. But in, in continuing to that, he's able to give him just some, some encouragement and to be mm -hmm. empathetic. That in itself truly can change the trajectory of a person, the way that they feel and the way that they continue to show up. Nice. Well, how, how often do these weekly haircuts turn into mentorship situations? For instance, does it does it exceed beyond being in the barbershop chair? Right, can they right. call their barber? Is it, uh, is it does it turn into a, a situation where I can call you yeah. if I am having a situation right now and I need someone to talk to? Mm. Mm. Yeah. So they what uh, what happens is they build a very strong relationship mm. with their barber. You know, just realize. <laughs> Most guys are going to the barbershop once or twice a week. Right. Um, by integrating just this conversation truly can change the trajectory of this person's lifespan. Um, so by doing that, it's just, it does create them to be, to be a lot more better. Right. Also, they have the Confess Project. That's what we're here for as well, mm -hmm. to be an integrate between the community of therapists and providers, yes. also working with the barbers one-on-one. -on -one. Yes. Re really quickly, uh, are the barbers signing a uh, 
confidentiality agreement? Uh, well, what happens is they, they do come into the program and they sign an agreement to say that, you know, that they also, they'll be able to, to work with us one-on-one -on -one if there is something that arises. Yeah. Um, we also have referral agreements in place <laughs> with providers that saying that if something was to, to be in the case that we can also refer them to, to clinicians in that mm, That's so fantastic. This project is so dope. Now, it is. The, co the Confess Project um, is Congratulations, because the tour is coming up in May, yes, yes. and you guys are sponsored by Galette, which is so yes, fitting and amazing. Yes. What do we? What should we expect from this tour? Uh, we'll be going to 16 cities across the United mm -hmm. States over a six-month period starting in May to October of 2020, and we'll be uh, going to different um, regions of the United States. We'll be going to L.A., to New York. Um, a lot of our work has been rooted in the South and in the Midwest yes, region, yes. but now it's time we realize that this is an, um, a critical issue across the United mm -hmm. States yeah. that we want to be able to take in other communities and have more barbers, but also to see that more people can really get help and to continue to have a life of wellness. Mm -hmm. What does it make you feel like when you see that one guy <laughs> Like man, we we help change his mm -hmm. life. What does that make you feel like? It's, it's it puts me in the in the in the space of I remember when I was a kid and I had that one mentor who helped change my life and. You know, going to my aunt's beauty salon, I realized that he took a lot of time with me mentoring, but also knowing now that we can set up space for young men to be able to gather mentors on the front end. And also, it's just it's just a great feeling to see yes. how they can come together. And um, it allows you to look at your younger self and just really be proud of you. Man, you, you should, should be proud of yourself. <laughs> yeah. right? I'm this proud of you. Wow, this is <laughs> great. You, That's fantastic. So continue success yes. Yes. on this amazing endeavor. And for more information, please make sure you go to Confess, confessproject.com. Let's give it up for Lorenzo Lewis. Up next.